this terrace or roof or whatever, you know, a nice little third floor. And uh, for forever, I always thought about doing something. And I'm like, what am I waiting for? Right. <laughs> so I was like, geez Louise. And so the guy that's always been with me, the guy that's always been with me on this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff, you call Mona. Yeah. She might be at the school. We're getting, we're getting tight and registered. Start oh. kindergarten. Oh, okay. So I don't know if she, they need to talk to me or something, but yeah. So it's, it's, it's a nice upstairs now. Yeah, it looks great, man. I mean, it's it's really really cool. Like I said, it was I seen the video. I was like, oh man, this is nice. What's cool you is uh, he is, you know this. They all they go through the phase, but his is uh, the solar system and everything, and then uh, watching planes. And because we're close to LAX, we get to see the planes come in, and he just loves going up there and looking at the planes. That's super cool. Super so, cool. Yeah, awesome. Good stuff. That being said. All right, we got people from where? Holy cow, we're going nation worldwide. I like Ooh. that. All right, uh, Ukraine in the house. Hi, guys. Hey, everybody. So what I want to try to do this week for anybody and everybody that's here, um, it's Father's Day weekend, right, coming up. And I think, John, you made a great point. Yeah. And you said that fathers are less likely to go in and – do the blood work or see the doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's, a, that's males in general. Not just fathers, all males. I mean, it's crazy. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Everybody, mm -hmm. right? Males. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. Generally, it's just, you know, I don't know if it's an ego thing or just what way us men are built to some extent. Um, but, you know, guys don't want to go in and go get checked because there's nothing wrong. And uh, that's what they say. And they're like, you know, there's nothing wrong. I'm not going to go get checked out. Why should I go get checked if there's nothing wrong? I'm fine, right? But, you know, if you don't go get checked, there's a lot of different things that could happen or could be happening. And you find out at a later date, and it's a lot harder to deal with, you know? So, I mean, there's a lot of different things guys, you know, generally get now that are very high risk. I mean, we're just talking about breast cancer, heart disease. Uh, I said, the breast, breast cancer still sure gets me. I, I, I didn't know that was a thing for guys. Yeah, it's actually a big one, man. Not a lot of people know about it because they think it's all just women that get breast cancer. There's a very high percentage of men that get breast cancer too as well. It's just not talked about it a lot. So and it's just crazy. The nurse, it was a guy, you know, that was, hooks up my dad and he was a breast cancer patient in remission. So, you know, it's just, you don't, it's not a gender, it, you know, it's not something that just, oh, girls get this and that's it. Right. So it's something that needs to be checked, you know, and, um, like I said, you know, I mean, not just cancers. We're talking about heart disease, which is the number one killer, right? And then I talk about, you know, diabetes and, and all these other different things that people, especially guys, seem to start watching out for. Um, so it's it's really important because, you know, men in general, I think we get put to the wayside anymore right now in, the, in this current environment and state that we're in in the world. And, you know, when we talk about June, everybody brings up Pride Month. Awesome. They have Pride Month. Cool. But Pride Month was established in 1999, where Men's Health Month was established in 1994. So five years earlier, it was established, and it's not even talked about today. That's why I brought up with you in the video, and I was talking to Brian before this, because every year when this month comes, it's awesome for Pride Month. I'm not saying anything against it, but we need to focus on guys, because at that point, their health is a big part of... So, so you're. It's correct that uh, June is Men's Health or or uh, uh, the men's terminology. Health men's Health Month. Okay, that's exactly what it is. That's what it was founded as, is Men's Health Month, and it was for prevention of disease, accidental injuries, everything and above that guys need to watch out for to make sure that they're healthy. And women have their own health month. I mean, you know, it's this is something that's that that and that one's pushed really, really hard. Ovarian cancer, all these different things, endometriosis, like all these different things are pushed, but we don't talk about this for guys. And you know, guys are part of almost every family out there. I mean, there's some families that don't have guys in it, I guess, but you know, they might have a brother or, a, or an uncle or a grandfather or whatever it is that they should be pertaining this to and trying to make awareness in some way, shape, or form. And if they are old school thinking where they don't think they need to go see a doctor, maybe this is the push, you know, where they say, hey, listen, there's different things. I mean, 
everything's on the rise, man. Prostate cancer's on the rise. I mean, it's up through the roof. It's I don't think it's ever been this colon cancer. Um, you know, like I said, breast cancer for guys. Um, man, it's heart disease. I mean, there's all these different things. And then, you know, you, you throw on neurodegeneration diseases like dementia or Alzheimer's, and guys are at a higher risk for that too as well. So that being said, it, it's Father's Day. It's uh, uh, Men's Health Month. Um, the, the the suicide is going crazy, and I know that one thing suicide is another one, right? It's we're, we're looking up the percentages because I saw something the other day that blew me away on the amount of, of guys that are doing that. Mm -hmm. um, four times more than women. Four times more than women. Four times. Eleventh <clears throat> leading cause of death. Eleventh leading cause of death. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number one is stress, right? Number one is stress or, or heart disease caused by stress. Uh, just okay. So let's let's jump on this for just a second. Yeah. Uh, for anybody that's out there, you guys, um, there is a huge. And John, I'd want you to talk about this. I don't think people realize when you do get older and your testosterone drops. Mm -hmm. How much that messes with your mind. Absolutely. It doesn't mess with your mind in the sense of, hey, I'm not muscular. Hey, I'm more fat. But actually how it messes up the mind and how, how you do get it with a lower testosterone. They talk about uh, the depression that goes along with low testosterone. Right. Can you go into further on that? Sure, sure, sure. So, um, you know, when we get low testosterone, a number of different things happen from, and this, this is different for everybody, what those symptoms could be. The majority of symptoms are like libido effect, um, you know, fatigue, um, you know, their body's not responding, your body fat's added on to their body very easily. Um, they're unmotivated, right? Um, and another, another big one that comes along with is depression. And, you know, when people think of testosterone, they think of building muscle, they think of all these different things as far as that goes, but they don't think about the receptors in the brain that, that are there from testosterone. So there's testosterone receptors in the brain. So when you're depleted or you're low, what do you think those receptors are getting? Nothing. And, you know, the chemicals in your mind are a little bit different as far as that goes. The body is responding a little bit different than it would before when it was at optimal levels or healthy levels. So, you know, that's the biggest thing I could say is, is that, a lot of guys go into the general practitioner and they say, listen, doc, like I'm not feeling good about myself or I'm having these deep, dark thoughts. And, you know, so the practitioner like doesn't even do a blood test on a majority of the time. They basically just give them, they give them an antidepressant, right? Right off the bat. Just because they say they're down, they're, they're feeling these different thoughts and stuff like that. There's no, Hey, are you trying to change lifestyle? Maybe possibly what's going on that's doing this. When they say there's nothing going on that's doing this, that's like a super red flag. Like if everything's all right in your life, like, hey, listen, everybody's got stress. They got good stress and bad stress. But if you have true depression, right, this is something that really drags you down. Some people can't get out of bed or whatever it may be. But, you know, we need to look at these different things and not just give antidepressants out. It's just really, really crazy. I mean, even, for example, today, you know, there was a medication that we didn't want to give my dad and it was for nausea. But you look up the medication and it's for depression. It just helps with nausea. So my dad's like, I don't want to take this. Like, you know, because SSRIs and antidepressants, there are some people out there that truly need them. But a lot of people don't need them and they're getting misdiagnosed or prescribed these medications. And you become a zombie. I mean, to a certain extent, if you don't need those medications, it's just not going to be the right fit for you. It can change different chemicals in your brain. So you know, knowing where your testosterone levels are at or making sure everything's all right before you go down that path would be the best play altogether for you, your body, uh, you know, the family around you, whoever it may be. And you're not going to be messing around and, and maybe making things worse or turn up the switch to other things that you might want to enjoy later on that these drugs might turn off for you. I mean, ED could be another issue with antidepressants too as well. So there's a lot of things that you have to take into of consideration i guess if you're going to take medications but knowing what your options are and knowing hey listen I'm, I'm feeling depressed there's nothing to be depressed about maybe i should get my hormones checked and see where my testosterone levels are at or estrogen levels are at you know because i'm crying a lot lately and i usually don't cry these are different red flags that people need to do a blood test to at least see hey listen where they're at and then at that point if you're still going through and you're still feeling depressed then maybe you need to talk to somebody maybe there might be a medication you might need to take down the road
But there's wow. different. Great. You know? Thanks for doing that. I just again, it's just one of these things that I've seen so much of this last couple of weeks, and then me going into Father's Day, and I absolutely, uh, I'm I'm enjoying this ride with being a father. Um, but also at the same sense, I'm also looking at this going, and, and I was having this talk just the other day with uh, Mo, is that it's cool and this is fun, but we got to really take care of this health because three of some of my closest friends, all prostate cancer. Oh. And it's like, um, you know, at that stage and it's like, you know, I go to, what do they say? When you get to a certain age, you go to more funerals than, than weddings, Yeah, you know? And it's like, yeah. wow, we really got to take care of our health. And it just seems like one of these things too is, is it's so much easier to take care of the health. Yeah. But they're still not taking advantage of it. Yeah, I don't I don't know why that is. I mean, if anything has, has showed us that we need to be more preventative, it was the last four years. Um, you need to be about preventative health. And then obviously, listen, we need to really put ourselves in check. I mean, even during those last four years, there was a 30 pound gain for the average United States citizen. That means during that time period, the average citizen gained 30 pounds. And they weren't all lean and mean, <laughs> and 30 pounds. You know right, right. Um, so, you know, this is just something else. We have to go back to health. Like, what are we doing here? We know that, listen, there's, we know more about our body and how we can help ourselves more than ever. There's more information on the internet. There's more medical providers out there. There's places like us that are unlocking these different options for people to take advantage of to increase longevity in their life, to be healthier, to lose weight, to gain lean muscle, to sleep better, whatever it may be. So it's just them really having to, to be motivated to take that first step, like you always talk about, to really want to do it for themselves because nobody can force you to do something, right? Um, you're going to have to ultimately step up and be like, all right, I want to do this and, and make contact with us or whatever it may be. So at that point, like, you know, people should really prioritize their health and for themselves, for their family, for everything around them, um, even if they just want to stay on this earth, they don't have to go work out. Just, you know, be healthier, eat healthier, drink water, be active in some way. I mean, you can walk down the street. I don't care what it is, but have some sort of engagement to this healthy, tight lifestyle that we talk about all the time. And I think it's not there. People just don't want to do it. Something that's interesting is, is Titan Medical is more of a provider and a help mostly with these new studies for the people that don't even ever never even thought about hey maybe i need to make sure my hormones are are balanced or even yeah. um working at an optimal level like even yeah. better than better yeah. because of the fact that they say the number one thing for getting through situations like fighting cancer or aging or anything is all muscle mass it's it's yeah. It's it's so cool that that's what it is. it is. At the end of the day, it's kind of cool to go, hey, if I'm going to do a battle against something that we're all probably going to have something at some yep. time, yep. I fight a better chance. I can get into the ring with this thing if I have some good muscle mass to my body. And that's not guys competing in bodybuilding. That's just right. all of you out there that are out there living. Um, mm -hmm. So for you women too, it's like – it's that's what I I love that I know that and it's so simple mm -hmm. it's like okay so you head on over to Titan Medical go yeah I want to get I want to get healthy but I also want to put a little muscle on right let's get let's let's get a little muscular in my 40s and 50s and stuff right. listen that honestly if you haven't put on any muscle in your lifetime that's probably the best time to do it I mean not not that you you'll probably gain a little bit more easier in your 20s and 30s than you will in your 40s and 50s but you really want to gain as much lean muscle mass as possible during that time. Because as you said, as you get older, one, it's harder to do. Those cells are not growing like that. So at that point, if you want to fight different battles out there, gain as much lean muscle tissue as you possibly can. It doesn't mean you have to be an Arnold Schwarzenegger or as big as Michael Hearn. But for your body structure, try to put on as much muscle mass as possible. And then, you know, as far as the, the bad stuff, you want to get the fat mass off as much as possible right and the more muscle you have the more fat you burn right so this is a this and is the a more plus. food you can eat outside of this there's no downside it all sounds no good downside. to me it yeah. sounds great to 
to the people I'm around and say, wait a minute, I got to eat more because I got to feed that body because it burns more. Um, yeah. And the people today now too love the fact that these women, uh, mostly these bikini competitors at the most top level, have mm -hmm. beautiful bodies. Mm -hmm. and, and there is some muscularity there, but it's very feminine, very yes. pleasing. Yes. And again, what I love is seeing these people in their 20s and 30s that look um, superheroes. Yes. But then you got the 40s and 50s that are still doing it, and they look incredible. Yeah. So just for anybody out there, this is, this is kind of a cool, easy yeah. setup. Um, you want to have true longevity, have more muscle mass, lean muscle mass. If yep. you want to eat more, you'll be able to do that because you have more muscle mass. Yep. Um, you'll be healthier. You'll stand a better chance of having a fight against something if something happens. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of confused on why not everybody would just go, oh, I'm just going to give a call right over to Titan Medical make sure that not only am I am I right, but I want to make sure that I'm I'm extra right and really yeah. focus in on this because I am in my 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s. And yeah. that's a big one for anybody that's here that's over 40. Yeah, get rocking and rolling seriously. For sure. Don't waste any more time. If you're if you're that age, whatever age you are, don't waste any time. You can turn around from wherever you're at. You know, I've seen a lot of people turn things around later on in life. And they weren't that good in their early 20s and 30s. So, you know, it can be done, but it, it, it takes you to want to do it. And working alongside with us, you know, you've got the best here. So you've got the Titans all the way through and through that cover every aspect for you. So at that point, you won't be left behind. And the best thing about it is the experience that comes along with it. All Mike's experience, all our experience here at Titan Medical Center. So that's a that's a lot, a lot of information that we hold that is very, very valuable to people out there that are looking to change their health, their physique, and overall quality of life. And I think that's the biggest part out there is improving your quality of life. And different people have different things what they, you know, they, they see as my quality of life, right? Whether it's in the bedroom, uh, it's their energy throughout the day, it's them being able to build any muscle mass, better sleep, whatever it is. So at that point, um, it's just up to the people, man, to to want to take that step. But I guarantee this: once you do take that step, and you start feeling better, and you start looking performing better, it will become a good addiction to a certain point that you want to just keep just doing it. And when you do it and you keep seeing those results, it motivates me even more. And I'm sure it motivates everybody else out there just as much. What's the real tanker is, is a lot of people try to put in that effort in the beginning and they might not have all the variables in place that they need and they're not successful. And then yeah. that's very discouraging, very frustrating. And then just turn it off. Like, I can't do this. This wasn't for me. Right. I, I, I'm just I'm just not meant to do this. My, my genetics um, or I'm just too old for this. Uh, I'm injured in this way. Like there's always going to be an excuse um, or rationalization that you can tell yourself, but don't, don't accept it. That's all I can say. Like, you know, don't accept that and and, and want to do it. I, I think that, you know, the people that are motivated and that really focus in and want to do it and start attacking it little pieces at a time become the most successful later on down the line. All right. I got to stop you for a second. Cause this is incredible. Uh, go for it. Read this one. Yeah. It says coach John, Mike, I sent blood work results from type medical to you, to you, Mike. Woo, no longer type 2 diabetic. Triglycerides are great. Thyroid medication is kicking in and hormones are balancing out. Mary, this is awesome news. This is sometimes, this is, I talk about this all the time where, you know, patients are type 2 diabetic, right? But that's not something you have to live with. And you reverse it a lot of the different times. I've seen a lot of people reverse this and get off of medications. So if you can reverse out of type 2 diabetes, you've just improved insulin resistance and all everything that goes along with it and improved the way your body's functioning now. Pancreas is functioning better. I mean, insulin's coming. I mean, these are really, really great things. So, and like I said, balance. This is thyroid. so big, though. This is so it's big. It's huge. I mean, this is this is the pinnacle of what we, we, we've seen in America. I saw the new report and it talked about uh, uh, fat countries and stuff and uh, mm -hmm. I think China was two uh, percent. I think it was China or Japan was two percent, and then it said a couple other places, and it just it blew my mind. Um, and it got to America, and it's forty-two percent. I'm like, <laughs> jeez, forty-two. That's almost fifty. That's almost every other person yep. is fat. Yep. That's a mind-blowing stat. Yeah. 
And I know that it's just this last four years have been so ugly, you know, um, shutting us down and <laughs> telling lock us down and stuff like that. Mind blowing. Still, I can't fathom it. It feels like it was a movie. It's crazy. And then if you look at the obese and overweight ratio of what it is, it's over 50%, man. So at that point, you're looking at it and you're like, dude, like, and you can see it. It's not something where somebody says a stat and you're like, nah. No. You go look at a room, you go look at a beach, you go look at an airport, pool, anything like that, and you will see for your eyes. And you might be one of those people too, yeah. right? So at that point, if you are, then you got to count yourself oh, in that. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, wait, repeat that. 20% of children aged 6 to 11 are obese. One of six? 20%. 20%. Of children aged 6 to 11 are obese. Yep. All right. So uh, 20% of age 6 to 11 are obese. How the heck did they get obese by 6? Mom and dad. Thanks. But see, this is what I was talking about at the airport a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. When I went to the airport, the people that were sitting behind us was a, a carbon copy of the parents and both parents. Dad was 400. Mom was 300. And all the kids four, and you could see they're like beautiful, you know, four <laughs> girls, very young. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, they're carbon copies of what their dad and mom do. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's just you're handing down. Well, I, I remember when I was growing up, my, my dad tried to hand down knowledge. A discipline, hard work, mm -hmm. uh, and a, somewhat of an understanding of life ain't fair. You're mm -hmm. not going to get handed anything. Um, and if I if I have some extra money after raising ten kids, I'll give you guys some. Yeah. Now, didn't need the money, but everything else he gave me was so incredibly valuable. And so I'm um, as a father, and again, being Father's Day week it is like, wh what am I handing down? I think if you're just handing down money. Mm -hmm. and love great but what's what do you consider love mm -hmm. you letting them eat chocolate all the time i'd love to just feed and eat chocolate all the time and give my kid chocolate all the time then i'm a good guy that's not love no that's definitely not love you're you know, setting them up for diabetes you're setting them up for this and you, i can't fathom failure a parent feeding their kids so much that they're obese at six years old well and it's not even the kid's fault at that point. No, right? he had no clue. They have, they have no idea. They can't do anything for themselves. And that's what I always talk about. And I hate to say it, but it's, it's a form of abuse. Like you're overfeeding your kids. I'm agreeing on that. Bad things. It's definitely abuse. If you underfeed your kid, it's abuse. If you overfeed your kid, it should be the exact same thing. I mean, honestly, you know, underfeeding them is one thing, right? Because, you know, after so long and they're malnourished and all these different things. If you overfeed them and, and like that, the health problems start kicking in. And this is another link into what pediatricians are doing now because of this. They're starting to prescribe GLP-1s to, right, 10-year-olds and younger if they need it. And honestly, I can't If like you're 10 years old and you're overweight, that's gone in three months if you just cleaned up the diet. Yeah, I know. I mean, no activity. Think about it. They have no activity, so they're not burning any calories, and they're intaking so many ultra-processed foods and so high of calorie count. It's plus the sugars, I mean sugars and everything, and then they're drinking juice out. And these aren't good juices; these aren't like freshly squeezed, <laughs> squeezed juices. So, I mean, it's just one. It's just boom. You're just boom pounding the body, and and the body gets no relief. So it just it starts storing, and. Uh, I, I don't care what anybody says. It's not genetics all the way around. Yes, your genetics play a part, and it, they could set you up if you go down the exact same path as your parents or the example. If you change everything. I've seen identical twins, totally different. Yeah. Younger, they're fine, and then they start going their different ways. One might start exercising. The other one really doesn't, goes out and parties, and they look different at that point. One's a lot fatter. One's really in shape, and they had the exact same genetic makeup. So if they were doing the exact same things, they would look exactly the same. But since they've ever passed, and there's some twins, they will do the exact same thing, so they stay the exact same. See, guys, I, I agree with you on that. And if if somebody's like, well, overfeeding is not a bad thing. Well, yeah, it is. We already know that, and and it's and it's setting us up to fail again. And then these last four years have shown us um, food isn't like medicine. Food is medicine. Absolutely. And you can abuse anything. And yeah, you under eat, you're destroying something. If you're over eat, you're destroying something. And so we got to, we got to chill on that. That's crazy to think. 
Um, yeah. Guidance from our government as far as the food pyramid. I mean, have you seen the updated one? I haven't seen the update. I, I, I take no guidance. I see, there's a picture, Jeff, if you could find it. The people that are in charge of the uh, food for each of the countries. Oh, I've, I've seen the. Those You've people. seen that one? Yes, I have. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> blind lead the blind there, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, great. That's who's in charge of uh, telling us how to eat and stuff. That's yeah. the, okay. I'm, just, I'm good. <laughs> that person doesn't even trust himself. He's, he's telling us what to do. Um, I know. Yeah. So it's scary. Yeah, I know this seems that maybe a little harsh, but I think love sometimes is harsh, and it's not the easiest thing. But it's somebody right. saying, "Hey, you're eating too much. You got to chill out. You got to start getting to take care of yourself." And again, yeah. it goes back to you wanting to do this for yourself. Um, I'm going to jump back to Mary. Mary, congratulations, because I know yeah. she's been that's so it. huge. And we had you somewhere. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, look at this guy. United States is bottom left. Jeez. Does it say the other three three locations? Look at that. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Mostly the dude on the bottom left, man. I just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on with these people. Sorry, guys. No, uh, I'm not. I'm not even slightly sorry. That's just, apologize. That's, that's stupid. That sorry about. That's, <laughs> that's not what we want. Um, so... What's going on this week at Titan Medical for sure. for the dads out there, for the yep. peptides of the week, for, for everything? Yep. So um, for this week, obviously, it's Men's Health Month all month. This week, we're doing the Father's Day blood work special. So if you're a father, if you know a father, you have a father, your boyfriend's a father, whatever it is, um, this is going to go out to all the fathers. So they'll get the full in depth blood panel for $130 instead of the $150 the discount. And then um, females, the exact same. So it's $225 for the females. They're not going to get a discount this round because they got it for Mother's Day and all that. Um, so that's this week. And then the therapy of the week is semi glutide. So GLP 1. There's a lot of people out there that want weight loss. And it's a very effective way to get weight loss, especially for people that need to lose a lot more than 5, 10, 15 pounds. If you're on that upper end and you need help there, maybe, you know, it's curbing the appetite too as well that, that you're having a problem with. This is going to fix that and help you lose the weight. Um, so you can make better choices about what you're going to put in your body, right? And that's that's a big one for this. Should be a tool. Jump back for a second because I didn't hear that. Were you saying the glutathione will also curb or was it, what was it? So, semi-glutide. Semiglutide. Okay. Semiglutide. So semiglutide works in a couple of different ways. One, it hits a couple of different points in the brain, actually one in semiglutide. And at that point, that creates the non-hunger effect. Um, and it also slows down digestion in the body, releasing macronutrients, the micronutrients evenly dispersed. So it controls blood sugar too as well. So your blood sugar is controlled. It's going to slow down the digestion. You're going to get your appetite curbed. You're not going to be as hungry. You're going to lose weight just like that. That's how it works. So, and there's a number of different health benefits that they've uh, established with GLP ones now. So cool. One cardiovascular disease. You're at uh, 20% less risk to have cardiovascular disease by taking these medications. Super cool. And there's more studies coming down the pipeline. PCOS for females. This is another big one for them. So there's a couple different things that this is going to be really, really good for. Not just weight loss and not just controlling glucose levels. So the more benefits it has for you guys, the better off you're going to be. So the only thing Great. that I say about the GLP ones is that if you're going to take a GLP one, and this is something we need to think about, Mike, because nobody else is doing this. I did see that there are a couple of food companies on the market doing it, but there is not a diet specifically for patients to take GLP ones, semi-glutide, tears, epitide. What would be the best for them is what I want to create. And that way we can give it to a patient because all patients ask me, like, hey, what, what should I be eating on this? Right? And I'm just like, eat, eat clean, eat, eat whatever you want, but just eat clean. You know, chicken breast and some lean steak or beef, uh, you know, some, some vegetables. If you like vegetables, a little bit of fruit here or there, you know, change up your proteins if you want. You want chicken, whatever it is, but try to stay lean. But if we can create something for people to follow, that's going to be a home run. There yeah. are companies out there, big companies out there right now that are developing, you know, frozen foods for people that are specifically on these medications. So it'll hit different nutrient points that they need because, you know, when, when you're not eating per se, or if you lose your, your appetite, you're not taking it. This is so big. You, you, you just hit a slam 
Oh, that's, dude. A, that's, that's a double decker right there. You yeah, hit the sure. top deck because what you're doing is you're going, listen, uh, I get because this is what we don't want to do. And right. I think that's kind of the debate. We don't right. want them to not eat. Right. And right. so if they don't feel like they they could eat, they probably think, and then we'll try to tell them that's, well, that's not 100% the case. We just want you to choose correctly and still feed the body. So we could create this where the nutrition coincides and goes, we still need you to eat these balanced three meals and maybe two right. snacks or whatever during the yep. day. Yep. Get those in and allow the body um, – to keep burning the fat, you'll be in a deficit, uh, and, and you get in better shape and still retain, retain the muscle. That's the key that a lot of people will not retain because of the fact that they'll just get on there and go, Oh, I love this. I'm going to just fast yeah. 20 hours a day and then eat one meal and I'm good. And it's like, well, that's no. not that. what I would like for them. Well, I mean, it, you know, a lot of people don't like it. I mean, you've heard the, there's coined terms out there right now. Ozempic face, and Ozempic butt, right? And this is because one, their face comes in, and then their, their their skin starts looking a little droopy. We know that look. It's like you know the death face if you're you're dieting real hard. Right? Yes. But the Ozempic butt is what happens when gravity hits, right? And you haven't worked any muscle out, and you haven't ate your protein, what you need. So you're not hitting either one of these different things. So you know muscle goes away. There's more flab there as far as that goes. You might be lighter and skinnier, but now you have a flabby butt. Or your face is not filled in properly. So, you know, these are different things that we we deal with our patients, and I try to put them on different programs to help them out. Whether it's, you know, Hercules Potion or something like that, where they can go get a workout, go get a nice pump, and fill it out a little bit more. But it's something that people need to realize: if you don't want this to happen to you, and you're losing a good amount of weight, and you're losing it quickly, you got to remember: you got to start training with weights. Yeah. You got to do weights, not just cardiovascular exercise. That's just gonna expedite the. The Ozempic butter, Ozempic face, right? You're right, lose right. Muscle because you're going to be burning through it, and you're not getting what you need protein wise to cover that. Um, so at that point, like you know, that's that's the biggest thing I say for people. I'm like, listen, get your weight training in. You know, prioritize protein, and and this is one I really don't bring up too much because you might get it, but put fiber in there. And if you need to eat fruit, because fruits are usually a good source of fiber, especially apples. So at that point, make sure you're getting the fiber in, make sure you're getting your, your protein in. If you need a little bit of carbs or, or fats, and if you're eating steak, you're probably going to get a little fats with that too. So you're covering, you know, a lot of those different bases with these different meals, and it's not that much. And, you know, you can cut down your portion size or whatever it may be. And like you said, you'll still be in a deficit. You'll still be losing weight, but you'll be losing weight in a more healthier way. And that See, I, that, right there is is the ebook for them just to pick up, you yeah. know, and, and, and just get that download. Uh, yeah. from the ebook right there because we, everything you just said is they're going to get it from the the steak or, or some of the proteins that they're going to be having um eggs or wherever uh and, and then with the medication doing that getting the fiber in there as well um and and a little bit of fruit and stuff you, you're set to win this is huge definitely definitely you know you're, you're you're making the medication better you're getting the best result from the medication by doing these things and you're changing those those habits that you didn't have before. Yep. So instead of going to the fridge because you're you know you, you want that snack and stuff, you're you're going to the fridge going, no, I want the good meal and things are happening quick. And I yep. just I just did this with uh, uh, one of my clients. He wrote me and he said uh, he dropped four four pounds this week. Nice. Four pounds is a lot in a yeah, week. A lot. And he goes, man, I I'm telling you, I get to this last meal and. Uh, I just, I, it takes all my will to actually heat it up. I'd rather just not eat it. Um, and I'm just so bored of this. And I'm like, hold on. Okay. We got to, well, there's two sides to this. You just told me you're getting ready for a wedding. All right. You also told me you only have five weeks to get ready for this wedding. So, so we, we got to make this some decisions here. Yeah. We got to make some sacrifices for sure. And I think this is for everybody. What do you got in this hand? What do you got in this hand? You dropped mm -hmm. four pounds. So what we're doing is really working. Right. Does does this over here on the other side, you showing up to the wedding looking like you want to look like, mean enough to you to where you're going to make that step? Mm -hmm. I think everybody at home has to make out that decision. That that wedding day or that goal date has to be enough to where you do take care of the nutrition, eat right. Now, obviously, he's an extremist where you know it's like you can still have a meal plan that's good for you and tastes good, but then also adding this in where you don't have those cravings. Mm -hmm. That's again, 
and that's that's a big one right and um that's the other part of um glp ones they've also done the studies on the addiction portion and people that like to drink alcohol maybe do recreational drugs or even eat sugary foods have lessened the addiction portion of it so some people that start wow. they stop drinking they stop doing the drugs they stop i mean eating sugar so at that point and once you stop eating sugar for about two weeks you never crave it once you go up there I, I mean me that's how i work so if i don't eat any sugar for at least i don't know about two weeks then i literally never crave Dang, anything. you're good i eat one of those sugary items whether it's a donut whatever it is i'm, I'm ready to go you're, you know you're ready, done ready to go to cheat so you stay away from it if you can for sure i love that there is um, another drug that we're going to be dropping another peptide and it's tesophene and it will curb appetite and the best thing about it is is that you know a lot of people were talking about you know there's a rebound effect if they don't change your lifestyle so this, right. will actually, this will actually help the body from not rebounding from the weight loss that you got so super cool that's huge super cool and they're putting this along with glp ones too as well but it works by itself very well so cuts cravings too so there's a there's another component we're going to be adding in down and, and giving another option for patients to be able to do so that's really big because i think that's one thing that most people miss is is the rebound because they they do just go hey i'm going to just get in the best shape of my life and they push it and they yep. do all these little kind of gimmicks to get in shape or at least get down to where their goal was yeah. but they don't realize by 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 doing all the gimmicks and stuff and not doing it properly the rebound is terrible yeah you, you, you're driving yourself into the ground and reversing out um is is testimony uh, testimony morlin still available right yes. now at titan medical it yeah. is so testimony is one it's fda approved it's never going away okay Never going away. Tesamorelin, Semorelin, PT-141, the you know, semi-glutide, tears epitide, those are all FDA approved. They're never going away. Never. Okay. Unless somebody so bans it later. Let's imagine on adding those into uh, the combination, because then, then you're adding in something that's double sure. attacking your 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 cravings are gone, you're burning more fat, yeah. you're doing all these things. It's just tenfold. Yeah, recovering faster. I mean, yeah, that's that's definitely a great trio right there. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That's well, cool. What do we got here, Jeffrey? What do we got going down here? You had something good there. Big shout out to AJ Buckley from Navy SEALs. Our dude's out there doing big things, man. Big shout out. AJ. Okay, what do we got here? Uh, how to manage your life. Go for it, Johnny. Sure. How to manage to live in good shape and healthy when most of the people around live unhealthy and do not work out in the gym. They discriminate because I'm in good shape and I don't eat junk food. Yeah. Well, they're haters. I mean, they're, they're <laughs> yeah. jealous. They, yeah. they can't look like you. Uh, you know, for that, there's a, there's a lot of people out there like that, right? They, they shame you for going to work out or they shame you for wanting to eat clean. Wow. Yeah, I just think, yeah, how to manage to live. Yeah, I, that's the only way to live. This is, is something I think you and me, Johnny, talked about the other day is that uh, especially when I was growing up, it, you know, dinner was steak and potatoes. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and if you, if you tell somebody, yeah, what are you having for dinner tonight? Um, chicken and, uh, broccoli. Oh, you're on a diet. <laughs> no, I'm just eating. Right. Where today's society is, uh, are you having in and out burgers, five guys, a pizza? Mm -hmm. What are you having? It's like, no, that's not, that's not eating. That's just you being, I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's laziness or uh, or you just don't care about your nutrition. I mean, at, at all. Or I, I the best way I break it down for anybody that talks about food to me is like I'm not a foodie, so I'm not a guy that goes out. Oh, I want to enjoy this. Or mm, oh, oh. I look at food as fuel, right? And if I'm a race car, I need the best fuel to put in my tank to run the best I possibly can. So that's kind of how I look at it. Like you want to eat the better foods because. One, it's going to make you feel better. You're going to perform better. And it's ultimately going to help your health down the road. If you continue to eat bad, I mean, you're just putting garbage in your tank. It's like putting sugar in your gas tank. Eventually, the motor is so, going to seize up. I'm confused. I, I don't understand the concept of, uh, okay, so you and me are extreme. I don't think we are. But I don't think we're you, extreme. you and me eat to fuel the body and get the best for the body. Okay, that's mm -hmm. how we eat. 
and, and we play with it so precisely to that way we can continue to build muscle. We can continue to get better. Now that's right. our philosophy. Right. But it's also to set us up if something happens. Yes. As we continue to live this one life of ours, which is amazing that we want to live fully. How is there no comprehension on eating Fruit Loops for breakfast every morning, a candy bar in the afternoon, and your pizza at night. Why is there no comprehension of, hey, if I continue to do this, I'm setting myself up. Listen, you're already going to get old. Mm -hmm. You're already going to have a battle to stay in shape. But mm -hmm. now you're tenfolding it by eating like this, and you have no consequence of, of worrying about diabetes or heart disease or cholesterol. I'm lost on that aspect. Where's, where's that common sense? I don't know. I honestly, I, I don't know why people, I mean, like I said, when we were growing, when I was growing up, I mean, we didn't really know this stuff. Nobody taught me about nutrition. My parents didn't teach me about nutrition. So I thought, and you look, when you look at commercials, when you're a kid, you're like, all right, cool. The, the, the normal thing for somebody to eat like me would be a bowl of cereal, a glass of orange juice, a uh, glass of milk. Like if you looked at those commercials, like that's how they broke it down. And, and that's what I thought breakfast was, right? I, you know, occasionally my mom and dad will make me scrambled eggs at home, which were great, some bacon. But, you know, generally, like I lived off cereal because I thought like that was, had nutrition in there for me, had vitamins in there for me, different things that I thought were going to be good. But now we know exactly what's in our food. Like, you know, before you couldn't go into a restaurant and see what the calorie count was on your food. Like that wasn't there. Now there's a law in place that says now they have to show you. So you can understand a little bit about your nutrition and what you're putting in your body and how many calories you're taking in. But like I said, now you know exactly like cereal is sugar. That's all it is, right? So if you eat, if you eat cereal, you're going to eat sugar, right? Um, and at that point, like what's that going to do? It's going to increase your glucose to your body and start breaking down cellular deterioration. So, and that's just one aspect of what you're eating that day. Like you said, they wake up, they eat the cereal, they're drinking some juice. They might go in the afternoon, eat a candy bar for a snack, eat some other fast food, and then at home they're eating more fast food. So you haven't got one good meal in and no good nutrition and a whole bunch of chemicals is what you've been taking in your body. So but with no consequence, the, the mind's not there to, that there's an issue. This is not. I think it's I think it's hidden. You guys let me know this. Don't be out there. You guys just let me know if that it doesn't I, I'm lost on. I, I know what a high day is for me and a cheat day is for me, but that's one day out of the month, you know, that right. I get to enjoy those times and stuff. Right. right. Um, and even those cheat days, I don't want Yeah, they're, they're, they're not the ice cream good. and stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, there, there's some, like I said, cheat days for me, like a really good cheeseburger. Like it has to be a good one, not a McDonald's one, not a Burger King one, nothing like that. It's got to be like a good fresh hamburger or something like that. A nice good milkshake that's fresh, you know, something like some little skits. Some, some homemade french fries, you know, they're covered with potatoes, but they're still got, they're still fried, you know, in oil. So at that point, like, they're not good for you. And I understand that. But, yeah, you know, if you prioritize the majority of your meals to be good and you cheat once in a great while, or let's say it's 15% of the time, you're going to be able to do that and get away with it. But if you're already behind the eight ball, I would not be thinking about cheat meals. You know, you can have a balanced meal or maybe have something to keep you on track. But man, cheat meals all the time for somebody that's not in shape or not at their goal where they want to be physically. I think you get, that's where sacrifice comes in, man. It took you this long to get that fat or overweight or the way that yeah. you are. Yeah. It's, it's not going to take a lot less time to do it if you don't do the right things, I guess. You know, you're going to be. You can still fix yourself. You can still get better. Cause I'll jump back to Mary earlier about the, you know, her health and her blood work. And it's taken a while to get to where she is now which is great with Mary's blood work now. And I, I thank you Titan medical for helping her get there. Absolutely. Um, but it takes time. It doesn't, it's not a fix. Yeah. So just for anybody that's out there that if, if you're worried about your health or you're worried about getting in shape, the first thing you got to do is start because it's not going to be a quick fix. It's going to take some time. Yeah. Um, so my recommendation again, just head on over there because again um not just yourself but but get your friends to get over there and, and start doing this with you yeah. you know just a training partner itself uh you know it's like yes go train the gym but also get them to get on a healthier plan start eating better 
start training better and make sure that their blood work is done and they're doing right. Yeah. And, you know, like, for, for that one comment that was earlier, the guy said that everybody, like, shames them basically for eating right or going to the right. gym. Get with a group that does what you do. That's that's the biggest thing. You'll have a support group then and instead of people going against you and turning you trying to turn you off to what you're doing. Because, you know, at that point, like, that's the biggest thing. If you're around people and they're bringing you down or they're asking you why you're doing this or why you train or why you why are you eating healthy or out of Tupperware or whatever it may be because you don't want to eat fast food. Then you you know you should probably change groups or let them know. Hey, listen, this is what I'm going to do, and I I don't need I don't need no negative comments to it. I need support, right? And and I'll support you and your goals. You support me in mine. So that's what really good good friends do. And, and at that point, you must surround yourself with good people. You got to have that circle around you. Got to. And and I think that was one of the biggest things. And 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 props to him for him staying on shape even with everybody around him doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, majority of people so. <laughs> What do we got? Uh, this chat couldn't come any better at a better time. I actually had to have emergency blood this morning because my testosterone levels were 5.8 and other blood's really low. And it's so frustrating. Wow. Emergency blood blood thing this morning for my testosterone. Levels. So I, depending on what lab you went to, 5.8 is very low. I don't know if that was as free or as total. I've, I've seen totals in the teens. I've never seen them in single digits before. But I have seen like 13 total testosterones. And I was like, oh my God, like how's this person even walking around? Wow. Kind of crazy. Man, um, hey, will you let us know what, what the next steps are for you uh, in the future uh, lives? We'd love to hear what the recommendation was for you to do. Definitely. Uh, all right. What do we got there, Jeffrey? I got one guy on my, on my end. He said, can you work out with a torn bicep, Brooklyn 11219? So I, I don't know if I'd work out with a torn bicep. I've never had a torn bicep, but I'm sure I've – I mean, I've seen guys that have torn biceps and, and tear their bicep right in front of me, what Drew did for sure. Yeah. So at that point, like, he kept working out, but not as much. I guess it really goes on how bad it is and how the pain is. Right. I mean, I don't know. Have you ever trained anybody that had a torn bicep, Mike? Yeah, but they weren't torn that day or week or month or year. You know, they tore it 10 years ago or something gotcha. like that. They've had gotcha. torn things like that and they can train on it. Uh, yeah. But if you've torn something um, and there's no pain there, then I guess that's what you're going to leave it with. Mostly a bicep has to be repaired quickly. Yeah. Like the chest. Yep. 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 Well, then you have that different looking bicep. You're not symmetrical no more. Drew's goes up. It's like, it's like goes up his arm. So it's, it's kind of crazy. Uh, actually, this might be an interesting one because this is like a Billy Gunn response. Go for it. Sure. It says, please, Mike, you're my bodybuilding idol. Can you please critique this plan for me and just let me know how, if this is going to get me to you or near you body wise? Achieving a physique similar to Michael Hearns requires a discipline and structured approach to both training and nutrition. Michael Hearn is known for his impressive and well-rounded muscular build, which is a result of years of dedicated training, proper nutrition, and consistency. Workout routine, this workout What's routine would be, and I didn't yeah. see anything after that. He, he, what? he went into chat GPT and typed in, how do I look like Michael Hearn? Oh, is that what he did? Yeah. Oh, really? So, it sounds, exactly sounds like, like what he just did. I just, you know, eat smart, um, train consistent, uh, and you'll do it. I have no idea what you look like, and I don't know what the plan is uh, that you're doing. But one of the first things you would do would be get your blood work done. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I don't know how old you are, but I saw that. I think the photo, my eyesight's not the best, but it looked like you're a father. Oh, you did. Good, good. Yeah. And so, yeah, just, you know, make sure that uh, you talk to them over at Titan Medical and see what they can do to optimize your health. And make sure that everything is functioning correctly. And then just start eating and training. That's yeah. that's really the ticket that you got to do. And that's anybody and everyone, my friend. Yeah. Consistency is everything. You hit that right in the head. That's one thing, man. Mike's been consistent for a long, long time. Uh, uh, uh. Mike, I can pee. Mike, I can pee as a natural bodybuilder and always screw up my peak week. What's your approach to peak? It, the, the, it's, it, you know, it, if, if it was always easy, it'd be great, wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> a lot of people mess up their peak week. It is yeah. just one of those things that happens. You're shooting, you're trying to change and, and just 
one percent better and that one percent better can turn to five percent worse it's just you're, you're just trying to be smart that week do the best you possibly can but you know i've had times where i walked into the universe smiling as i walked on stage because i knew i cr there's not a human alive that's going to be standing next to me <laughs> um it's got know, a good so feeling yeah, it's just it was a good feeling. But then I've walked on and and um, done a lot of peak shows, and I'm like, ooh, uh, I'm gonna be into a tussle. Um, mm -hmm. So it's peak week's fun that way. I think that's what's great about peak week or dieting. Mm -hmm. It's always a a fun experience of trying to play chess against your body. That's what you're doing. You're playing a chess match, and everything that we're doing here, Titan Medical is setting you up first off so you can actually play. So let's just start there. Let's just, they're going to say, yes, your levels are in a good place. You will burn body fat. Your thyroid is good. Everything is healthy. Your kidneys and livers are working. Okay, now begin. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to say that first. Um, they set you up to win. And then when it comes to nutrition and training, you're just staying ahead of the body um, on it wanting to plateau because your body's a brilliant thing. You know, it's, it is. It's a brilliant thing. It wants to retain some of that fat so it's healthy. It wants to retain some of that. And, um, yeah, it's a chess match. And I love the chess match. And I know also that I, I may never win that chess match, which kind of makes it fun as well. Because I'm still trying to go for that ultimate physique. And I may never get there, but it's, it's I'm okay with the uh, playing the game. You think it's water or nutrition that really hits the peak for them? Like, I mean, as far as what they're doing, like the timing and everything like it, that? The timing is, is is your body really working with you? Did, yeah. did you do the 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 fill up of the water, the carbohydrates coming in right, and you didn't spill over? Was there enough yeah. sodium still to retain where you don't go flat? Yeah. Um, are your nerves getting to you? Are, is your cortisol going crazy? Yeah. Are you too stressed? Because I was seeing some incredible people – um, it's like the story about Robbie Robinson and Frank Zane. Mm -hmm. I talked to them both separately, and then I got to talk to them together about the same exact Olympia. And mm -hmm. Frank Zane saw um, Robbie at Golds, and it was a uh, two or a month before the Olympia. Mm -hmm. And Frank goes, "Well, I'm not going to win this." This is Frank Zane going right. and he saw Robbie and goes, holy sheesh, I'm not going to win this Mr. Olympia. This is 1977 Mr. Olympia. Wow. So the day came, they competed, Frank won. Oh, so he came a little bit better, huh? So what happened was, and Robbie says it too, Robbie goes, if the show was a month earlier, I would have won. <laughs> but I peaked too early. These are the two of the best in the world has ever seen in their entire lives. And two guys that are still so intelligent today, the Einsteins of bodybuilding, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, Robbie straight up, he says, I peaked way too early. Mm -hmm. So just for you guys out there that are amateurs or just trying to be good, or even if you're a pro, it's never really a given. Mm -hmm. You could be mm -hmm. Robbie Robinson and you're walking around a month out from the Olympia and you are Mr. Olympia, but you mm. peaked too early. You tried too much. And this goes back to everything that Johnny and I talk about. Start the process. You don't need to win tomorrow in that sense. You don't need to be in shape tomorrow, but you need to start the process. Get on the peptides. Take care of your blood work. Get on, if you need it, testosterone, whatever that is that they say that you need to do to optimize your body, start. Mm -hmm. And that way we can crush it and kick ass together. Absolutely. So it's Makes all sense. About, yes, sir. What, else we got here? what do we got? Amazing. Mike, you're looking cool in yellow. Uh, Matt Nicholson, I always recommend you guys. Jarrett Finley, Type Medical. What's going on, guys? Let's put some good ones on here for sure. Yeah, so uh, the other thing, um, you know, obviously, you know, next week there's going to be some sort of discount that I'm going to do for guys. I don't know what it's going to be yet, so it'll be a mystery. But, um, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do. But I'm definitely going to do something else for guys next week, too, as well, and every week afterwards. And I want to cover different things, too, as well. So, you know, we'll be hearing a lot about guys from me on my Titan Talk later on today and through the week from Titan Medical Center. What time are you going, what time are you going live later? Um, 
probably look, go live like at five o'clock. So there you guys. Four thirty, five o'clock, right in there. I don't know. It just really depends. I got a couple of things I need to do in the office when we get off ours. So go back on over and talk to him again if you have questions today. Mm -hmm. Also, um, guys, go follow it on uh, Titan Medical on uh, Instagram, Facebook, yeah. all over the place. And then get in there again. Huge congratulations today to one of the incredible uh, yeah. Titan crews that worked with Titan Medical and Mary. Again, incredible, incredible yeah. stuff. Johnny, maybe we're going to do another video. I'm going to see. Can we do that other video tomorrow? Sure. I need yeah, it for absolutely. Friday. I need it for that going into that sure. Friday show. Let's do it. I'll be dressed and impressed for that one too. Jay Martin said, started my journey this week. About to hit the gym with Hercules Potion. You're going to love that Hercules Potion. I can't wait. That's going to be awesome. How um, long before do you take the Hercules Potion? 45 minutes is what I, I usually we usually tell patients. I mean, at that point, like, I mean, you could do it right before you walk in the gym if you really wanted to. Like, there's been times when I'm in my car, literally, and, like, I'm pulling up the syringes, and I have my little alcohol swab, alcohol now, and just inject myself right there. They're like, you know, I'm like, what are you doing? They're scared people are going to come across. Like, it's, it's nothing but amino acids and vitamins. So if anybody ever approached you, you can always tell them that. So it's not a big deal. I wouldn't do it in the gym because people always get the stereotype. That That's going to be a weird one, right? right? So <laughs> if you don't want any bad looks or anything, anything like that i would i would normally say i recommend it like before you leave to go to the gym take it or if you really have to you know get in the back seat of your car you can take it right there really i think i should have mona shoot me in the yeah. shoulders with some syringes yes in the gym it colds yeah. <laughs> just get my vaccine <laughs> uh never some said yo john my test went from 580 to almost 1400 thanks for the bump <laughs> okay that's so great lying. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good testosterone level. I mean, and I also, I, 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 Jeremy, what did the free testosterone go from as well? Oh yeah, because that was a that was a big one. Because um, I know that he's talked to us before. Yeah. So that was a huge thing there. Yep, yep, yep. Usually it'll go up. So hopefully it will. I mean, even if you raise IGF one levels, that'll lower SHBG, which will increase free testosterone too. So there's a lot of good things that go wrong with that. Thir three to seventeen. Nice. Wow, that's good. Three. That's really good. That's really good. Three. Wow. Yeah. Three. Yeah, that's that's not good at all. He must feel great at 17, though. For sure. Especially yeah. with the total two. Like he's just reservoirs going right in there. It's three dollars. The high is like 24, if I'm yeah. correct. Yeah. So he's right up there. Yep. 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 And he's got like uh 12 kids. So that must be uh he's keeping up with those guys. Oh man. <laughs> I can't walk. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good for you. I always tell him, man, no like, when they come in, I'm like, listen, your wife is either going to love you or hate you after this. And if they hate you and they don't want to be like that, tell them to come in. We'll get them squared away. So I'm on the same page with you. and be ready to rock and roll all the time. I love it. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh man. So what else we got here? Uh, your mental and physical strength are clearly highly developed and the alkaloids are there. My question is how much would you contribute towards the spiritual strength required to maintain your image? Wow. How much would you contribute towards the spiritual strength? I don't know. That's kind of a weird question. I don't know what that means. Can yeah, give us some, cl some clarity on that. Uh, uh, Rob Bell said big, big, big fan of both of you guys. Thank you. Thank <laughs> nice. You. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, I don't know what that means. Spiritual strength are required to maintain your image. I, I don't know what image I'm protecting or maintaining. Yeah, maintaining. I'm just me. So I, yeah. I, I got to be honest. I, I don't know what that means. That's all right. Uh, and there's no image. It's just me. I, yeah. Remember, I'm, uh, I'm before social media. And so who I am is who I am. And I've been in the, I was just looking at uh, uh, the news and, and, and the magazines and the newspapers from the eighties. Yep. And so I, I've been doing this for a long time, um, but it was never something I had to portray, portray the image. The image seems like it's like, like, I think it's a new thing yeah. or I'm just misunderstanding what he's asking. Cause I, don't, I, I mean, the, honestly, image, when I break down this question, all right, so there's no amount I'd contribute towards spiritual strength to required for my image and either for you. God and your image don't correlate to me. God is like, 
that's where they're talking about spiritual. Like, all right, so like I invest heavily in God. So I pray every day to God, but that doesn't have anything to maintain my image. It has nothing to do with my image. My image is how I am, how I present myself, how I carry myself. It has nothing to do with my religious or spiritual background or what I contribute to that. So that's kind of where I'm at with it, right? Like I don't have to be spiritual or, you know, have my love for God to maintain my image. I think that's it's false. I think that would be more for like an evangelist, I would think, to a certain degree. Yeah, sorry, but I, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> All, good. All good. Let's hope everybody's just their selves and they're kicking butt and staying in it and having fun. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, man. This is uh, it's definitely a weird question. You see any more questions you like there, Johnny? No, I don't see any more on here. I think we're, we're good on my end for sure. All right. For everybody out there, uh, again, it, it's a big week this week. Um, you guys stay in it. It's Men's Health Month. Um, and, and the numbers, we we're kind of going over everything. Um, uh, it's a tough one for men. Um, yes. Men are tough, so they can handle it. But yeah. do take care of yourselves and, and, and get over to Titan Medical and, and make sure that you get checked up and you're still doing that. And so we can all be like married today and make sure that our numbers are great. And everything, right. uh, everything correlates in the body, mental, physical, emotional health. Make sure you're good in all of them. That's it. That's it. Where the wild things go, baby. That's right. I love it too. Johnny, yes, I will sir. see you tomorrow. I'll try to schedule in some, grab some of your time tomorrow then. Awesome. I can't wait. Thank you guys as always for having me on here. I appreciate you, Mike, and everybody else on here. Thank you guys. And Johnny's going to be on again uh, 5 Eastern today. So, yep. again, this is a great time for you to talk to him about HRT, TRT, peptides, um, anything, anything and everything. This man has a grasp on all of it. Yeah, that's the other thing. Get your peptides while you can. I mean, there's literally like – I mean, there's another pharmacy just popped up and they're doing them, but I'm telling you guys, like it's, it's, it's running. Down. It's starting to slow down. It's starting it's, to shut down. It's, it's the board of pharmacies and everything. They're going in these pharmacies and they see it. They're telling them, you're not to ship out anything immediately. So at that point, like I, I and people ask me how long, I, I don't know, but I know for a fact that I'm telling you that they're telling me that it's going to be on, on very soon, a couple months, maybe. And, and, and I don't want to tell people like, a whole bunch of peptides that's not what i'm trying to do but i'm just trying to be transparent with people out there because some people are like well, i didn't hear about this well i, I want to let people know and be transparent about it all right thanks johnny appreciate, appreciate your time it. brother yes, sir talking a bit all right